Hello and welcome to Migrate to Amazon EMR video series. The topic for today is best practices for migrating to Amazon EMR. My name is Radhika Ravirala. I am a data and analytics specialist at Amazon Web Services. This topic is primarily intended for Hadoop administrators who are managing on-premise Hadoop clusters for application developers and Hadoop application developers who are developing Spark and Hive workloads for their organization. When migrating Apache Spark and Apache Hive applications from your on-premise environment to Amazon EMR, there are certain key considerations to think about and those fall squarely into the environment that you're working in. It, it is primarily shared versus dedicated clusters, data movement and metadata migration, as well as, as performance. So let's dive into migrating Apache Spark and what the migration path looks like. So in a typical on-premise cluster environment, there is a shared cluster that is used by multiple tenants who are submitting a variety of jobs to the cluster. The cluster resources are shared by all the tenants and there is often a contention for these resources. You can also run Apache Spark uh, applications on Amazon EMR in a shared environment. In a shared cluster, be aware of how many concurrent jobs you expect to run at any given time. In a shared cluster, you may need to manually configure Spark codes, the memory, and executors. A shared cluster is generally appropriate for interactive use cases, such as if you're using Jupyter Notebooks or running edge nodes with EMR cluster. We recommend that you use the dynamic allocation setting in Amazon EMR as appropriate to both automatically calculate the default executor size and to allow resources to be given back to the cluster when they are not used. Dynamic allocation is enabled by default on Amazon EMR. In contrast to that, most customers running their applications on EMR tend to go towards a dedicated cluster. Using a separate uh, cluster per Spark job is beneficial for scheduled Spark jobs. This approach helps isolate the Spark jobs to prevent resource contention, allows for optimization of the job, depending on whether it's a CPU versus a GPU job, and ensures that you only pay for the resources that you use during the duration of the job. The Amazon EMR maximum resource allocation setting helps ensure that your entire cluster resources are dedicated to the job. When it comes to performance, starting with release 5.28, Amazon EMR makes available a performance-optimized runtime for Apache Spark that is active by default and on Amazon EMR clusters. The EMR runtime for Spark is up to 32 times faster than EMR version 5.16 with 100% API compatibility with open source Spark. This means that your workloads can run faster, saving you compute costs without having to make any changes to your applications. Based on a TPCDS uh, benchmarking test that was performed on a six node cluster, EMR performed 2.6 times faster than Spark with EMR without the runtime. It is also 1.6 times faster than the third party managed Spark using their runtime and all this at one-tenth the cost of the third-party managed Spark. In addition to this runtime improvements, the Amazon EMR team has also worked on several improvements to improve the Spark performance on EMR, and that includes configuration, which has to do with the CP adjustment of the CPU disk ratios, the driver and executor configuration that comes by default, as well as planning and optimization for your queries, which includes features like dynamic partition pruning, join reordering, flattening of scalar subqueries. In addition to these, customers can also take advantage of other Spark optimizations that are provided out of the box with an EMR cluster. And those include the EMRFS S3 optimized committer, which is an alternative to the output committer implementation. And this EMRFS S3 optimized committer is optimized for writing files to Amazon S3 when using EMRFS. The committer is used for Spark jobs that use Spark SQL, data frames, data sets to write Parquet files. EMRFS S3 optimized committer 
improves the application performance by avoiding list and rename operations done in S3 during job and task commit phases. It also avoids issues that can occur with Amazon S3 eventual consistency during job and task commit phases and helps improve your job correctness under task failure conditions. Another feature that customers can take advantage when moving their Spark applications to EMR is the S3 Select API. This API allows applications to retrieve only a subset of data from an object. For Amazon EMR, the computational work of filtering large data sets for processing is pushed down from the cluster to Amazon S3 service, which can improve uh, performance in some cases and reduce the amount of data that migrates between Amazon EMR and S3. In addition to that, leveraging Glue Data Catalog for Metastore significantly improves uh, the cluster's reliability by not having to maintain another Hive Metastore, which is running uh, on an external database. In terms of uh, increasing the fault tolerance for your Spark applications, customers have to think about sizing their executors. You want to find the optimal CPU to memory ratio for your job when you're moving your applications from your on-premises environment into EMR. You want to be flexible with instance types that fit the V cores and the memory requirements that you have for your applications. Another tip is to split your jobs to contain the blast radius. It also makes debugging much, much easier. You also want to reduce the shuffle size to avoid wide transformations with the use of uh, uh, predicates such as group by and reduce by. Now let's talk about uh, con some considerations for migrating to Hive. Hive is one of the common applications that is uh, run on an Amazon EMR cluster. When migrating to a, your Hive applications from on-premise to Amazon EMR, by default, Amazon EMR clusters are configured to use a local instance of the database as a Hive Metastore. To get the most out of your Amazon EMR cluster, you should consider using a shared Hive Metastore, such as an Amazon Aurora MySQL or a Glue Data Catalog that can work with additional AWS services. If you require a persistent Metastore, or if you have a Metastore shared by different clusters, services, applications, or AWS accounts, we highly recommend that you use the Glue Data Catalog as a Metastore for Hive. When upgrading Hive, Hive Metadata DB should be backed up and isolated from production instances, as the upgrades, upgrades might change the Hive schema, which might cause some incompatibility issues with the production instance. By default, TES is supported as the default execution engine for Hive clusters on EMR. In most cases, TES provides a, an improved performance over MapReduce. However, if you are migrating from an older version of Hive that used the MapReduce MR engine, certain jobs might require some changes. Note that although Hive started supporting Spark as an execution engine since 2.3, this is not supported on Amazon EMR. Another thing to note is if you have large input files that cannot be split, or if you have the map portion of a job that exceeds the default memory limits of a container, you will want to require a larger test container size. The default setting for this container is determined by mapreduce.map.memory.mb property. It should at least be, the container size should be at least as same as that property to get the most value from your uh, upgrades. Another consideration to think about is the storage layer. S3 provides a versatile data store for uh, elastically growing your storage as your data grows exponentially in your analytics application. It is very common for customers to put their data in S3, build a data lake, and use the uh, data lake as the basis for processing and consumption of data for their analytics. While customers have the ability to use HDFS, due to the replication factor involved, as well as uh, the cost to run EBS volumes uh, that, have, uh, that have HDFS running, we highly recommend moving to S3. EMR is designed on the design tenet of decoupling compute from storage. This allows the compute, which is your 
cluster resources and the storage, which is your S3 to grow independently so that customers can save costs as well as get the optimal performance from their clusters. The other thing to think about is job throughput and scheduling. EMR by default use it capacity scheduler, ensuring that the tenants are uh, guaranteed a certain capacity when they're running their jobs. But depending upon the nature of your workload, you have the flexibility to move from a capacity scheduler to a fair scheduler so that all the jobs uh, get a fair amount of resources when running their jobs. You, you also want to maintain high availability through the implementation of one of the three approaches or one of the three mechanisms. The first mechanism is a warm failover where you are maintaining a tiny cluster in addition to your primary cluster so that users can be redirected to the tiny cluster when things fail. You can use the auto-scaling feature in Amazon EMR to scale up the cluster until the primary cluster comes back up. You also can uh, leverage the multi-cluster configuration where you have two clusters running simultaneously in order to have a high availability for your Hive applications. And the last one is the ephemeral design, which is where uh, you are launching clusters per job and only using the cluster for the duration of that job. And just like your Spark applications, Hive applications can also leverage the S3 API, the select API, to bring only a subset of data for processing, thus reducing the traffic between your EMR cluster and the S3 storage layer. So to learn more about uh, migrating your Hive and Spark applications, uh, please uh, visit our Extract, Transform, and Load section in the Amazon EMR Migration Guide. We also offer a two-day on-site workshop where you can learn about deconstructing workloads, building future state architectures, building a migration plan, and uh, uh, get recommendations for next steps. You also have help available in the form of professional services as well as partners who will support your implementation needs. And, uh, please also visit aws.amazon.com slash EMR slash EMR dash migration to learn more about all the migration help that you can get to move your on-premise clusters to EMR. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.